What's the most roost you ever built in a month? Uh, probably about 45. 45? Dang, 25 years old building 45 roosts yeah. in a month. What'd that feel like? How'd you do it? <laughs> it was a team. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Blue Collar Boardroom. I'm here with a special guest, but this is an important topic, dude. There's a young guy that's coming up. You know, it's like some, but it's like afraid of the trades, whether it's in construction, home service. Maybe it's because we are around, we think that we're above working with our hands. I don't know what it is, but there's always sort of this stigma associated with being a roofer or working on a window job or maybe being an electrician. And so I just want, if you're watching this, uh, like, subscribe, because the point of this is to bring light to the stories you know, of, of guys living the American dream, making an impact in the world. This happens to be a young guy, 25 years old, five years experience in the business, and what's really, really exciting about today is we're going to be talking about some simple things that apply to any businesses. Um, my man here, when, when everyone else is saying, don't mess with Home Advisor, that Home Advisor is evil, this guy has found a way to take $40,000 and turn it into $800,000. And it's crazy. Um, that's what the home service uh, gold rush is all about. Uh, all you need is the leads. All you need is the customers. And then you can build the blue collar American dream. This this young man has got a company in Indianapolis, one of the fastest growing company in Indianapolis, um, brand new company. And uh, you know I was really impressed with uh, his social media presence. He came a bit part of our Scott Diamonds Elite Mastermind and embodied a lot of our core values. So I invited him on the blue collar boardroom because if you're a young guy and you're watching this, uh, this could be you. This could be you starting your own business. Uh, whether it's in solar, it's in roofing, it's in general contracting. Look, people are spending money on their homes. Banks are giving money to improve their homes. And property values are going up. Prices of uh, goods are going up. That means markup and profits are going up. And so on this episode, I'm going to show you how to get the leads you need for the Blue Collar American Dream of my man, Austin Chastain. Man, welcome to the Blue Collar Boardroom, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So tell me a little bit about your background. You're 25, you're 20 years old. Um, Tell me about like, you know, when you first got into the contracting business. So I first got into the contracting business and I was actually a commercial uh, roof layer and I was just up there eight, 12 hours a day uh, on commercial projects, not knowing how much anything costs. It was just me and a couple buddies and we were just literally rolling out uh, TPO and ISO. Um, after that, you know, one of my buddies from high school. It's a actually, great place to start. TPO, TPO roofs ain't no joke. There's a lot of technical aspects to them. Yeah. They protect, they protect multi-million dollar buildings. You were probably seeing uh, these commercial owners. We were on colleges. We wow. Were on campuses, multi-million dollar. And you got to see how a good job site was ran. What kind of company were you working for? Uh, it was, uh, it was a multi-million dollar company. It was called Inslee, and uh -huh. uh, they're still, still profiting and you know doing roofs every day see i love that you don't have to be this guy who starts your company right off the bat you can start you know like in the mail room but on definitely, the roof definitely you have to learn you have to learn before you leave but mostly flat roofs right yeah that's that's all I, that's all i did at first then i had a buddy um who was showing me these checks you know thousand dollars twelve hundred dollars and i said you know i'm making six hundred dollars and i'm working 40 50 hours a week granted you know five and a half years ago i was that was fine i was fresh out of high school and i was I was loving it, but, you know, me knowing him, I definitely knew that I had to figure out what he was doing, how he was doing it, and what he was doing. So uh, so I actually uh, met up with him. He showed me a little bit. And instead of me going to the same company, I went to a completely different company so we could actually compete. Um, so joined that company, and our first day on the job was about two hours of training in front of a whiteboard, uh, something kind of like this. And we were watching videos, and they took us out into the field. with uh, They filled up two pickup trucks with about six guys. Uh, Took us out to a neighborhood and told us to uh, start knocking on doors, let them know that if they're interested, that you can have a manager swing by, do an inspection, and text the group. So that is how I got into the industry. Them, sweep, sink or swim. And if you're a contractor and you want to start a door-to-door -door organization, I want you to know there's a gold nugget in what he just told you. Um, the secret is letting the doors separate the men from the boys. Because Austin rose to the top. He was obviously one of the champions out there on the doors that was able to sell and able to survive. And it is obviously a lot better when you can give them better training before they go into the field. But exactly. one part of my system is, is that I don't want no softies. I don't want no so snowflakes. We're a warrior culture. And in, uh, it's that Greek quote that out of 100 soldiers, 80 of them are targets. 
And so if you load up six guys in a truck, yeah, twelve, and we had eight no of idea them, what we were doing eight of them probably ain't going to knock that many doors. No. Probably going to get nothing, but you might have four guys, four or five guys. That's what, what was, was left that? After. What, was it, what was that first day like? We were all shaking. I mean, me being 20 years old out there, somebody just dropped me off in the middle of a neighborhood. My hands were shaking. I didn't know what I was going to say. They didn't give us a pitch. They didn't give us anything. They literally told us, go knock on doors until somebody answers. And when somebody answers, we want you to tell them there's a manager around the corner with this with our company. And we had a storm just now that came through. When's the last time we had a roof inspected? And that was the start of it all. Granted, I... Uh, I was bad at first, you know, with that kind of training, I, I knocked the doors and we were getting text messages in our thread of, you know, one, two, three Smith street, one, two, three Smith street, you know, text after text. And I wasn't, I didn't get anything. I mean, I maybe got one inspection that whole night. We were out for three hours knocking and, but I knew if my buddy that I know can do this and make $1,200 a, a week, that it, it, it's just, it, Probably was just a training. Obviously. So that's another le learning lesson for the audience and for you. What made you stick committed to the opportunity right. wasn't some promise to make a lot of money. No. It was that you saw that your buddy could do it. And that's why when I was talking before this podcast, I was talking about the network marketing angle of growing a door-to-door -door sales team. Yeah. And, and that is going and getting your friends and family to give you people that could be a good fit. And I was telling him how to pitch them. You know, it's like, hey, do you know somebody? I mean, look. I know you probably think I'm just a regular kind of troublemaking guy, <laughs> kid, but I'm not. Look, I'm out here helping people get their roofs paid for by the insurance company. We replace hundreds of roofs. Look what it's been able to do for me. Our company's growing. We need project managers. A lot of people out of work. Prices are going up, and this is a great vehicle. So here's what I want. I want five names of people you know that might be a good fit, part-time, full-time, or maybe that could just refer me people that need roofs. And, you know, anybody that might have a personality, a uh, good work ethic, good attitude, anybody, you know, anybody wants to earn more than a doctor or a lawyer. I had a guy, a buddy of mine, he came in his first year was a security yard and maybe in his first week out of contracts to make $8,000. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it could be you. I don't know. We had that. And so, you know, we, we were talking a little bit about that, but look, man. You want to get your team having those conversations. You want to have those conversations, and you want to get raving fans of your company and people that aren't even associated with you referring you people because that's where social media growth and network marketing really comes from. People start connecting the dots for right. you. And, um, you know, tell me a little bit about, you know, this, this journey from a guy who couldn't even get, you know, a deal on his first day to – did you have you ever did you sell a million before yeah. you started your company? Uh, it was really close. Okay, it was really close. I was like nine nine seventy. That's close enough. Yeah, it's a million. So yeah. you so, so you sold a million yeah. bucks. Yeah. How how what was it like? Because for all the guys that haven't sold a million dollars in, in a year, and and I mean that was that was sold and closed in one year. I mean I probably had two three hundred thousand after January, you know, mm -hmm. until I actually opened my own company. So I mean. I'd say so 1. How, 2. How, did you, how did you do that? Well, because I always say the first phase of the of the of the scaling blueprint is to learn how to sell a million. Because if, if you can't sell, build, and collect your own million dollar book of business, yeah, you know what are you going to do? You, it take four people to sell a million bucks. I mean, no, it takes one person, right? And then you need the next step is to get a salesperson that can produce a million as well. But what what were your secrets? How what did it look like? Really, it was just staying consistent and actually getting out of the truck. I mean, I've heard it time and time again. I mean, I've, I've been in the industry for a couple of years now, and that's the biggest thing is just getting out of the truck and going and knocking on the door. After I get out of the truck, I mean, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on fire. I mean, even if I get no, 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 I just know that there's, there's going to be a yes. I mean, I've even had my wife drive the truck behind me and, you know, just so I could point something in the back, I think that helps a lot too, especially when I'm on a I'm a losing streak or something like that. Well, your truck's got a wrap. Yep. It's a nice truck. It's a moving billboard. Of exactly. course it, of course it freaking helps. And I, I use my truck as a prop. It's a very good uh, strategy. It's another gold nugget that's dropped because people people if you have a nice truck and you have a legitimate wrap on it, they know you're a legitimate business, and they're all sizing you up within the first seven seconds. And if you give them the ability to look behind you and verify it, they may not even need to go to your website. You got right. the you got everything they need on your truck. Right. Um. So we, our goal, you got six door to door sales guys. Yep. Now you, you, your your company Blue Ladder is a fairly new company. Last year you did two million dollars in business. Two million. Yep. You're 25 years old. 
This year, the goal is to do $5 million in business. A lot of 25-year-old kids, they would love, you know, you know what, what's ironic. Tell me about even when you first started. You, you still didn't know all of the game, did you? I literally started, and the first thing I did was get the truck wrapped. But uh, I started the company, and I didn't even know how to order a job. So my, my ABC rep sat me down showed me how, and my beacon rep. They both played hand in hand. But uh, they, I, I didn't know how to order my first job that I sold. It was a retail job. It was like $6,000, and it was a Yelp. It was, a, it was off of Yelp. I don't know how we got it, but it was retail. It was the middle of winter. We roofed it, and it s- snowballed from there. Um, also, my father-in-law actually started. He's our general manager now, but he had no idea he, how any of this worked. And uh, you know, he was... He was, he was pretty pretty confused on the amount of money that I was making before I even opened up my own company, um, making you know two hundred thousand dollars, and he was a manager for thirty years, and he was making really good money, but he wasn't making, you know, more two. than a doctor and a lawyer. Right. And uh, after I showed him and uh, showed him the ropes, he rode around with me for a few months. Uh, there was a hailstorm as soon as we got our, got the ball rolling. There was a hailstorm, and then. COVID hit, but even, even then, I think that, I think we had, for, for me training him and him learning all the ropes, the ins and the outs of the industry, I think we had a great year for us. Yeah, us $2 too. million dollars in a business where a lot, a lot of different businesses were shut down. Yeah. And you opened a brand new business. It was very stressful. <laughs> I look, love to tell you. <laughs> well, what, what was the most stressful part? Having a, having a, having my, uh, our second daughter on the way and not knowing how to order a job. Oh, yeah. That was most stressful. <laughs> hey, listen, guys, you got to commit now, figure it out later. That's what we did. A lot of times you, you see that the guys that are um, <laughs> successful as leaders in construction, yeah. they have a stubbornness about them. They have faith in their self and in their character. And essentially, they don't mind putting themselves in a position where they don't know the answer. It's like a lot of times people want all the answers. And I would tell you the biggest thing that holds people back is analysis paralysis. And they overthink things to the point, like even I was on a trip, we're in um, Costa Rica and I watched, you know, my sister-in-law, she was going to jump off this rock into the, into uh, off of a waterfall and she saw other people do it, but she still was afraid. And after she's, telling herself that she's not, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this. I knew that was over with then. But essentially, I, I watched her overthink jumping into a section of this waterfall that everyone jumps into that 10 other people jumped into. And it's all because of just analysis paralysis. Yeah. I watched it physically. And I just think contractors, they get into that mode when they want to grow their business. They want to have this system or they want to have – the office or they want to have the sales team. I didn't have that until, uh, let's say this December, January, like maybe four months ago, five months ago, the first whole year I didn't have that. And we did 2 million. I mean, it's great. It's great. And so, um, you know, the biggest thing is, is that you're making a difference because you are trying to do things differently, man. Uh, what, 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 what makes your company different? What, what's, what, what's Blue Ladder all about? Blue Ladder really is just there for not only our reps, but the homeowners. And we're there to take it from beginning to end. And uh, we solve big problems for big paychecks. That's, that's what it's what about. about. Absolutely. <laughs> Rednecks with paychecks. And if you're watching this in the Indianapolis area, these guys are always looking to connect with hungry entrepreneurs. And so um, most importantly, uh, you know, what really – I like about your strategy is you're brand new to the business. You spent forty thousand dollars on Home Advisor. You turned it into two million dollars. A lot of a lot of business. Yeah, a lot of business. So tell me your little process for that. What we did was uh, we took the Home Advisor, turned it on, but we didn't just take uh, replacement leads because they were running anywhere from one hundred and twenty dollars a lead to one hundred and eighty dollars a lead. Uh, and you know, being fresh in, we didn't have as much capital as other companies around. So what we did was we took a uh, $20, $30 repair lead, went out to the property, met with the homeowner, let them know about us and our, and our uh, process and, uh, you know, about the company. And then we, we actually walked the homeowner through the process and let them know that this missing shingle or this, they actually had hail damage uh, that was uh, hidden 
from them and they had no idea about it and they thought that they could just slap a shingle up there and call it a day and we actually let them know that there's a process and the insurance company uh, definitely should take care of them for that so we turned the twenty thirty dollar uh, repair lead into a full roof replacement and actually took care of them a little bit more than they even thought so we under promised and over delivered beautiful yeah beautiful yeah and so um you know the thing is i think a lot of digital marketers say you don't buy leads you don't use home advisor and i say you use anything that has a positive roi yeah, yeah. and you know the reality is is that no you're not able to build a brand with home advisor no. and with facebook you can but you still get into a neighborhood and once you get the job you can build the brand you exactly. can knock the neighbor's doors you can retarget the area through facebook and it's using the kind of all these lead sources to get you going in an area like yours where there's a storm, but sometimes you're working old damage. And, you know, so one of my methods, one of the things I think that you should remember, a lot of people don't execute this, but it's so important. It's you have to go to the area that got hit in Indianapolis, the Fishers and uh, Noblesville, all the big roofs, mm -hmm. all the area where everyone else has worked where you think that you can't door knock, you need to direct mail every single person that's a, got a big roof in that path that's got decent, good damage. Because what happens is, is if you drive a bunch of that area and you drop pins on all the old roofs, you'll cover four or five square miles and get 2,000 big good leads. Yeah. Well, if you hand address the envelopes, if you send them a hand address direct mail that says, I've driven past your home. I noticed there's damage. My name's Austin. I'm the neighborhood roofing professional. It's time's running out for you to get approved. I can offer a free inspection. I don't know why you haven't got your roof replaced yet. Here's someone in the neighborhood that I've helped. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to do a free inspection. Yeah. We're going to give you a satellite roof measurement. We're going to give you a 40% off all roof upgrades. Give us a call. Look, out of the 2,000 or 3,000 people that you send it to, only 1% of the people will call you. But now you have your number one guy who trusts the process, who wants to follow in your footsteps and get what you got. You have that guy go knock behind those doors. And when that, when that guy goes and sells, because dude, those, those leads, they close at 80 to 90%. When those, when those leads close, you got to use one of them as a case study. You take a picture in front of their house. You say, hey, we sent you an, a, a letter and you didn't respond. You're part of the No Roof Left Behind campaign. I'm Austin. One of your neighbors responded off of this letter, got their roof paid for and replaced already. Here he is standing in front of you. Don't get left out. Don't be the last person in the neighborhood. You're affecting the neighbor's property value by not getting your roof addressed. You're, you're affecting your pocketbook by not getting your roof addressed. You can upgrade the curb appeal of your home with little to no out-of-pocket expense. Call me back. What are you waiting for? What happens is there is, for one, two touches, and there's also social proof. And basically, you can increase the callback rate. You can get like, um, especially if it's all close to one area, instead of 1%, you might get 2% of people to call you back. And all the while, the whole point is, is that every job, every, every customer, for you to get a build video and a testimonial video. Now, on, almost none of my clients do it, and I don't do it. Because it's not hard. Build video, testimonial video every time. Hey, Austin Ch Ch Chastain, don't overpay for your roof. We're over here in Fishers. And if you're one of these people that haven't addressed your roof, it's probably because you don't think there's damage, even though everyone else has got their roof replaced. Look, it's not too late. I'm replacing Mr. Jones. He was one of these late bloomers uh, where he didn't file until about three months ago. We got him approved. We're replacing it. Synthetic felt, ice and water shield. Beautiful thing. But more importantly, we upgraded his ridge vent. I want to do the same thing for you. Um, click the link below. Upgrade. We'll add ridge vent. This is typically a $4,000 upgrade. We're going to give it to you for free. Every wire that responds to this ad, click the link below. And what I did there was hook story offer. Mm -hmm. I showed hook is how you get their attention. Don't overpay for your roof. Avoid unnecessary expense. I'm going to show you how to get an insurance company to pay to replace your roof. Just like, okay. Also, I brought up their biggest objection right off the bat. Maybe you're one of these guys that thinks the damage isn't that bad, right? right? It's, a, it's an attention getter. Then I told the story, okay? The story of the build, the story of the customer. If you don't, if you do ads without stories, they don't work. No one gives a shit about you selling shit. If you tell a story about it, all of a sudden they'll pay attention. Sure. I don't understand it, but I do at the same time. Yeah. Um, the last part 
is making an offer. Free inspection is not an offer. Free estimate is not an offer. Everybody knows they can get a free inspection. Everybody knows they can get a free You got to offer some, something yeah. off or yeah, make an it, incentive. Make it good. Yeah. And then have, have enthusiasm. Have, have, have enthusiasm. And then one of the secrets on Facebook is, is that people are very, very like uh, squirrels. So you want to make an offer like, hey, if you like what you've heard so far, then click the link below and schedule an inspection. Here, let me tell you a little bit more about the ISO Water Shield. The ISO Water Shield is a rubberized membrane that is a new age product that adds years to your home and it prevents all leaks so that we can give a 50-year warranty. So we get all this paid for by the insurance company and you may have damage. I want to come out and do a free inspection. And what we're doing is a free upgrade to ISO Water Shield, $4,000 value. Click the link below. My point is I made two call to actions because some people might get a phone call while they're watching the ad or they may lift their head up while they're driving. The more calls to action you make in the video, the better the video is going to be. The better the hook, the better the video is going to grab their attention. The better the story, the better that you're going to have compelling. People buy when their emotion is greater than the resistance. And so whenever you create emotionless video, that's when people don't fucking pay attention. That's when your ads fall flat on their face. When, the, when you don't follow the format of a hook story and an offer, then you don't, you don't get results. And so whenever you do videos without my coaching versus videos with my coaching, uh -huh. you got a script. The script's not meant to be read. The script's meant to be internalized. Yeah. So that you can kind of understand the, the – so, so – you know, the idea is you leave here, you know, and you have practice on this hook story offer. And once you, once you really got it, and I got it from Russell Brunson is really where I learned it. And you can, you can apply it to your ads. You can apply it to your social media posts. You can apply it to your emails. You can apply it to your um, everything. Yeah. Um, if it works. It works. No, it works, man. <laughs> um, so, so tell me, uh, as a young entrepreneur, what you feel like is the biggest thing that's going to hold you back from hitting your goals? I just got to stop Facebook scrolling. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a good point. So listen, guys. Um, he says he's got to stop Facebook scrolling, and y'all are on YouTube consuming content to better yourself, so you're way above that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's the same thing, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Look, we, in a, we live in an economy, a place where you, you, you got to take control of your focus. Yeah. You, you got to focus on what you can control and you got to realize all the money in the world, all the smartest computers in the world are all the technology is thinking all the time about how to steal your attention of, away from what you're trying to do. And in a distracted marketplace, all right, there's certain things that you have to do. Like I, I am actually very guilty of overdoing the social media as well and getting distracted and falling down the rabbit hole of scrolling. However, I was telling Austin that the most expensive information is free information. That's information from roofers that <clears> suck, <throat> contractors that suck, wannabe coaches, punk ass bitch scaling coaches that never <laughs> built a team or don't have a team, sales guys that say they're million dollar sales coaches that never built a million dollar book of business. Um, so point is, guys, uh, what you got to do is you got to, I mean, I'll tell you what I do to prevent myself from fucking up. I take the Facebook and the Instagram apps off. I try and do like my stories throughout the day, upload them all at one time. The only time I really ever made this work 100% was when I was in Costa Rica surrounded by the most beautiful scenery in the world. But because yeah. it's hard, you get on your phone and you're on Facebook, but deleting the apps, you know, um, that's one thing. I'm half tempted to do it. And, and more importantly, you know, you can still create stories, you can still create posts, you can still go on there and, you can put it at the time that you want to do it right? for, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes at a time. Maybe you want to do it an hour to two hours a day. That's still a lot of time, but it's the time that you're on your phone. I mean, there was times where I look on my phone use and I would see, you know, fucking 10 hours a day. Yeah. Well now, you know, it's a lot less because look, dude, you got, you got to create when you're consuming, you're not creating. That's right. And so that's the biggest thing I see out there is, that people are distracted and then they don't even give themselves a chance because they're not, they're not spending any money advertising. So they're not getting advantage of the distraction marketplace. Right. And if you don't capitalize off of this, then you're, 
you're not using basically data is the biggest industry over oil artificial intelligence is constantly going after this data of all the impressions that you are making on the internet and this is now something that you either take advantage of or you don't your business either thrives off of this or it gets beat by the people who are and that's why i think that austin is going to punish a lot of old school Indianapolis contractors We're here. We're here to take over that are afraid to become social sales kings. Social sales king is a guy not afraid to tell his story, not afraid to um, spend money on advertisement and use this 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 tool to make the world a smaller place. Social media to 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 to, to get your American dream. What what's your what's your American dream? I want to I want to have uh, multiple offices multi-state operation um obviously keep the one in indianapolis uh but also eventually open something up here in florida 10 year 10 year goal would be something like that um family healthy all the all the guys on the team are loving blue ladder and we're we're growing absolutely five star rated and you know elon musk said that you ought to try and figure out how to accomplish your uh 10 year goals in six months and so deal (laughs) um (laughs) There's going to be a hurricane in Florida this year, and I can show you how to get set up for it. Let's do it. All right. We got, we got some guys ready to roll. More importantly, you got to put your head down, and you got to get to $5 million in Indianapolis. And, and the way we do that, what's the most roost you ever built in a month? Uh, probably about 45. 45? Dang, 25 years old building 45 roosts yeah. in a month. What'd that feel like? How'd you do it? Uh, it was a team, it's a team effort. All right. <laughs> uh, it was it was a lot of in going, outgoing, a lot of uh, uh, it's just a lot going on. I mean, for for me, going from uh, you know not even knowing how to order a job to doing forty five in a month, there was a lot. A well, lot you going must on. have a software, a CRM. You must. Yeah, we use Job Nimbus. Okay, nice. Job Nimbus. Yeah, uh, still uh, still have some some kinkering to do on it. Um, really holds all of our data um, on the on the front end, but we still have, you know, financials and a couple back things. How do you track your collections inside of there? With the financials. Yeah, with the accounts receivable yeah. reports from QuickBooks. Yeah. And, and really our, 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 uh, our, fi- our uh, Andre, we're just going to name drop Andre uh, right now because him and his team, they take care of all of that, all of our books, I have to touch none of it. They take, they take care of, I, mean, I can see it and I can monitor it, but they take care of everything. They go through, uh, they're, they're my personal uh, bookkeeper, the business, all my guys, they take care of everything. Who, 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 how does your collections department work? As far as? Like collecting checks. Uh, we, we collect uh, first check and deductible, uh, typically when the material gets delivered mm-hmm. or the following day when the work happens. And then we uh, either move it to gutter siding, painting next. And after that, we have it supplemented and final invoiced by our back office. And then she sends off a final invoice to the homeowner. Um, but with how much volume we're wanting to do, we're going to have to multiply somewhere. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> let's just... Realize that every single insurance restoration contractor has to probably supplement the majority of, of the jobs. Almost invoice, every single one of them. Invoice every job, which does hold up the collections at times. Yep. And the reality is sometimes in some of these CRMs, it's hard to see all of your your numbers. Uh, and I'm, that's something that we, we still need to get better at. Mm-hmm. So our, our financials, I don't mean to cut you off. Our financials are, are still uh, not where they could be. Mm-hmm. Um, and with us training and hiring new reps that are wanting to make a change and make the impact that Blue Ladder is here to make, um, there's, there's obviously things. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to show you how we do it, and we're yeah. going to get it straight. Yeah. You're not going to build faster than you get the money. And I'm gonna, I've seen the consequences of you know, too much sales, too much offense, not enough defense. Look, offense in this game, it makes up for everything. The defense, though, does have to keep up if you want to pull the money out and live the American dream. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a it's a balance, uh, and it's it's really kind of hard for it to be balanced because you have to be unbalanced about both of them to balance out all the chaos that comes with. It's fun. Uh, fighting the insurance companies and collecting from customers. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, Man, dude, this has been a great talk. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. Um, I'm curious about how you go in there specifically and close one of these home advisor deals after three or four roofers have called them. We just we just go in there and uh, show them the value, show them 
uh, the other contractors um, in the area, some of them don't know storms and they say they do. So we go in there and explain, uh, you know, if we get an insurance company out here, they may actually deem this non-repairable. Uh, you do have, you know, missing shingles on the front and back slope. And that's something that they should definitely be able to take care of. If they don't at first, then we go down a little deeper into the, into the rabbit hole. But uh, really, we're there to bring as much value to these homeowners as possible. Um, and like we said, and you, you bring up uh, we, we, uh, we fix big problems for big paychecks. And, Have you uh, ever done a mission statement and core values and stuff like that? Yeah. Oh, perfect. We're going to yeah. get you all We're going to get it all taken care of. Yeah, yeah. So, and you know uh, what? It's okay if you just take all mine. Hey, we'll see. We'll probably change a little bit. No, you change, change <laughs> it up. But I, 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 I always wondered, you know, you always do want to make it your own, essentially. But I had a buddy of mine send me a picture of his core values, and they were the same as mine. I was like, <laughs> oh, man, you're I perfect. Like I love this guy. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, with, with the guys in, in our market and obviously I have, I've never storm chased. Um, it's just about showing our value and what we can bring to the table versus, uh, the guys that have been doing it for 50 years that, uh, is just trying to sell retail 500, $600 two shingle repair. And we can bring the value of don't pay anything out of pocket. We're going to come out, we're going to tarp it at no cost at the moment. And we're going to get you taken care of, uh, when the insurance comes out. Well, that's a gold nugget. Um, lo- using, we we buy telemarketing leads. We do too. Uh, we, we, we look, dude. If it's a good lead source, I'll buy it. Okay. Right. If it works, it works. <laughs> so, you know, the reality is is that I do really well with spending my ad budget on Facebook, on YouTube, on Google. But there's no reason why I shouldn't be paying attention. I give Home Advisor a hard time because there's contractors fighting over it. So and many. It's a good thing for marketers to use to advertise against it. Yeah, against yeah. it. Yeah. But the reality is, is that it does. Not every not every Home Advisor lead is going to pan out. But if right. you can flip, you know, let's say you get ten leads and you can get three of them to replacements, that you know, hundred. See what's so good about you? Dollars. <laughs> what's so good about you is that you 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 got such a good lead generation method that sometimes the the curse of the good lead generation method is it creates a lead dependence. Right. What we want to do a better job of is six pack, which is knocking the doors around it, and then turning those six pack into whole streets and whole neighborhoods, and a whole hardcore door to door. That is about really if if you say you want it. Yeah. The commitment you made here, basically, I would say. You, 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 you assign neighborhoods to sales guys. You have six sales guys. Uh, you assign them the neighborhoods. You track which people they talk to. You tell them to go back. What I realize is salespeople never work the neighborhoods. Like, they never knock the same door at three different times throughout, three different times throughout the day. And if they do that, then they, they can always probably talk to a large percentage of the people in the, in the neighborhood. I was taught uh, years ago to knock it six times. Not really? three. I was taught six. Nice. Street sheet, six doors. Here's your two neighborhoods. Have fun. The only reason that I figured out about the home advisor is a buddy of mine um, with that company. And, uh, um, but we really couldn't knock in COVID. I mean, most of the homeowners, when we went and knocked on door, and I'm, I love, I like door to door. I mean, um, they would just, you know, get away. You know, they, they thought we were going to infect them or something. So mm-hmm. that's where the home advisor came in. I didn't know how to really shoot a Facebook ad uh, to, captivate an audience or anything like that so uh it was homeowners that were wanting us and a couple other contractors come out and then we just had to stand out we had to be the diamond nice yeah nice so um you know what it comes down to is use the content that i've created to sell your business opportunity and use the fact that you're a part of our network and mastermind as a way to get as many people that would second guess the fact that you're a 25 year old blue collar entrepreneur, multi million dollar business owner. Yeah. You know, um, you got some tattoos there, but you know, are you Scorpio? That's my daughter. Oh, okay, cool. Daughter. Yeah. Nice. I'm a Scorpio too. My Aries, my oh, wife, nice. other daughter. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Got the I whole got family this, on my sleeve. I got this really good book I recommend. Uh, this book's called You Were Born for This. Okay. Yeah, the, the inside of it, there's a, uh, there's a uh, really little cool little uh, astrology chart that basically it gives you like real what's it say what's the title say let me see this it says radical for astrology for radical self acceptance but that that was take a look at it that's a pretty good book that's a pretty good book I do a lot of audible oh yeah yeah well have you uh, have you ever seen the Andy for Cell seventy five hard program 
Yeah. You ever thought about it? I haven't done it, but I see a lot of people doing it. Well, I failed four or five times. <laughs> I will tell you that sometimes um, I wish whenever I was 25 that I'd have learned discipline better. Yeah. I should have made a lot more money than I'd. I should have made a lot more impact earlier in my life. I fucked off a lot of opportunity d- due to being a little uh, all over the place. Somewhere. And um, so, you know, the discipline, if someone would have told me it would be worth, it would save me tons of heartache, pain, effort, and energy, I would have done it. I would. My wife, she straightened me up. At 25, I started getting better, but I had to learn a lot of dumb lessons and if someone approached me from a business standpoint saying you can be more creative, you can be more impactful, you'll have less people quit your business, you'll hit your goals faster, you have to get more disciplined. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm, I'm a guy who doesn't like authority, doesn't like rules, don't yeah. like being told what to do. I mean, and so, you know, that being said, there's certain things about the, and in the 75 hard program I was talking about reading because it says you got to read 11 pages of a book. You got to drink a gallon of water. Um, you got to work out twice a day, which twice a day workouts is, you know, it, it hurts. But I'm telling you, man, you go through that process and it'll make you more money. It will help you manifest better things in your life. Because the power, listen, if you want my how to get your 10-year goals in a year, you're going to have to think about the one big thing in your life that makes everything unnecessary. For me, the one big thing is the unstoppable sales team, okay? And building that unstoppable sales team and getting the message out there and figuring out how to take the message, make it better so more people are impacted and then synthesize the amount of people so that I get the warriors faster. So th- that that's what all this is all about, okay? For you, I don't know exactly what that is, but the reality is to get your 10-year goals in less than a year, you're going to need 10x the energy, the pure focus, the pure belief in your 10-year dream. The, every time that you don't complete a cycle, every time that there is an undisciplined action, every time there is a hole in the game, there is a contradictory in the matrix, it sucks the life force out of you. And the way that you add to the life force is you have little victories of discipline and I'm sitting here, you know, saying, you know, basically for me, are you married? Yep. Okay, cool. See, whenever I was 25, you know, me and my wife had a lot of arguments. We still do, but. We don't argue. That's funny. (laughs) Basically, um, I was on the road a lot. I was um, traveling and what happened is, is that as I, I didn't know how to prioritize and balance enough and I put so much importance in the business and the salespeople, the wife would get jealous of the business and the salespeople sometimes. And it was a weird balance because now, you know, the wife is so involved in the business. Is your wife involved in the business? Yeah. Okay. So what's she do? Uh, she does a lot of the back end stuff like um, intake and sending out new uh, emails to homeowners, welcome letters and a bunch of back, back end stuff. Okay. We got to get them connected. My mm-hmm. wife's going to come do a podcast with me and specifically, you know, to hopefully, you know, get the attention of some of the wives that are behind the scenes. Yeah. And yeah. Helping yeah. Us, yeah. Cause I wouldn't be where I was at without her. Me neither. And, uh, you know, she just she put up with a lot of nonsense, but it was it's mainly about having enough people in a system so that you're not always the one having to recreate that. And if you're the one having to run around and put out all the fires and sell all the jobs and do all the stuff, it 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 really does can't do that. It takes a toll, <laughs> and eventually, you know, you know, there, you got to pay the piper. There's candle burning on both ends. Grant Cardone says you can't burn out, but you 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 can you can. If you if you're building a house on a house of cards or you have a uh, you have high energy on a low foundation, there is times where your stock crashes. Sure. And that and I'm hard on myself when my stock crashes, and so then I compound the problem with bad energy and negativity. Now, I'm always really easy to be optimistic and see the future and work hard, and, but having the right energy means that. You know, I'm taking my, well, for me, it was that I was trying to, to get over the stress of having to hire and fire all these people and deal with all the negotiations and fights that it takes to grow a big contracting company. I just, to healthy deal with it without drinking too much 
I had to do a higher level of physical activity than I was doing, period. And my business used to knock on a lot of doors, climbing a lot of roofs, doing a lot of shit, used to keep me pretty fucking active. Yeah. I've never been a really overweight guy, but I just got to a point where basically uh, over the years just depended on two or three beers just to... You function, know, function. <laughs> yeah. not 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 during work or anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, just to re- relieve some of that. <laughs> yeah, when it's on. <laughs> yeah, so you know, seventy five hard for me helped me get a little bit away from having to have that. Yeah, like every time we went out to eat, and every time, like you know, like it wouldn't, you know, and now, not to say I don't like to have a drink every chance I can get, but, <laughs> but also I, I, I want those, I know how it feels to have day after day after day after day of, and I, I look at it as my energy is my source of creativity. My energy is my source of the law of attraction. My energy is the source of, can I live my destiny? Right. Cause the destiny is there and the stars, they lie out in the path. But if your energy's fucked up and you, <laughs> But because you got low energy, don't go and take the path because the path is not the path of least resistance. The path to winning is the path the most path the most resistance, and that's what happens to people. They, they, they don't they the natural resistance of life because anything in life worth having is fucking hard. And so people just don't they're not want they're not unwilling to pay the consequence. Yeah, the the pay for the pay the piper. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that that's my advice to a younger me is you know. Try and try and get a little bit more disciplined, and and then for me also, uh, I I was resentful at God to some extent. I'd went through some things, lost family members at a young age, didn't like the whole high school experience, felt like I didn't fit in at some point in my life, turned to like drinking, partying, and this different aspect of myself. I don't know what it was, but to some extent, I didn't really feel like I reconnected with. Um, I reconnected with God one time whenever I had to get sober whenever I was 18 and then that lasted for like two years and then I kind of went back to party Lee and party Lee and uh, from 21 to 25 was hardcore party Lee <laughs> but not too hardcore just fun fun <laughs> hardcore. hardcore but um, but then I mean at 25 I met my wife and my wife was my higher power you know what I'm saying yeah. and so that that doesn't work either and so I, I would just have to say, like, I found a purpose. I've always had a purpose to train others in this roofing business, to help other people and to, to build a great team. And so to put the team first, whenever I wanted to be narcissistic or self-destruct, that kept me from fucking up. And I kept doing it long enough to where eventually I, I, was, I was good. Yeah. And uh, so I would just have to say, like, uh, you know, Try and try and tap into that other stuff because you work against yourself when you beat yourself up. You work against yourself when you have massive anxiety. You work against yourself when you drink too much. You work against yourself when you um, don't aren't self aware of what's holding you back from your goals. And so, you know, if you want to get to your ten year goals, if I was looking at a twenty five year old Lee, I I think I could get worth ten million dollars. By the time I was 30, but I'm 35. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Anyways, that's the episode for the Blue Collar Boardroom. Hopefully, there's some good gold nuggets. My man, Austin, you can find him on Instagram. How can you find you on Instagram? Man, I don't know. Let me look it up real quick. Oh, wait a second. You Hold on a minute, right? boys. That's right. You can find him on Facebook. <laughs> Blue on Facebook. Ladder Roofing. Yep. And yeah. on Instagram, Chastain59. Yeah. Chastain59. There you go. There it is. All right, guys. Thanks for having me, man. Like, subscribe, comment below. Really appreciate you, buddy. Wish you all the best. I know you're going to be a big star. Yep, we're going to make it. All right. Thanks.